All right, guys, welcome back to this RB build. Um, yeah, ticking along now. This episode, we're going to do some bearing clearances and bearing clearance clearancing. Uh, bearing clearancing is, uh, again, one another one of those things that's just detrimental to your engine. Uh, it's very important, but it's another one of those things that just takes ages. Um, it's just a very lengthy process. Uh, you will find generally, if you're putting, as I am, a, uh, a set of standard size bearings in an engine with standard rods and a standard crank with no grind on it, um, it's not a massive, massive big deal. Normally it's always, it, it's pretty good. They're pretty good with it. But if you've got a custom grind crank, uh, or you've had to grind your crank, or you're putting aftermarket rods in, um, if you have to go to oversized bearings, that sort of thing, it can be very, very, very important to make sure that your clearances are right. Um, again, it's, it also depends on the application of your motor. Uh, for one, uh, big boost motors will often have bigger, bigger clearances in the bearings. Um, you will find that bigger clearances will give you a low, lower oil pressure. Um, if you have a tighter clearance, you will generally see a higher oil pressure in your motor. Um, so basically, yeah, it's just a, another one of those things, engine building takes time very important but it is what it is so anyway first thing we're going to do is uh, basically the tools you're going to need so firstly you're going to need uh, micrometers and uh, the dial gauge um, or a bore gauge whatever you want to call it um, first thing you want to do obviously is ensure that your micrometers are calibrated obviously we use standardized two inch um, or one inch whatever you want to have we've got a few sets here um, but basically whatever you do you always want to use the same standard um, calibrator or calibration um, I calibrated these prior they are perfect um, so are these actually both sets um, are calibrated perfectly so basically from then what you're going to want to do is measure the journal you want to measure with your uh, micrometer so essentially what we do to do that is uh, unlock it and the way you use these is uh, you actually do them up with this little dial at the back and you will hear it starts to ratchet or click uh, and that sets uh, basically a very uh, sp specific uh, torque setting on it to, to give you an accurate measurement. So I'm going to go ahead, it's pretty hard to do this with uh, one hand on the camera. <laughs> but uh, pretty much you just want to work this around and uh, lock it up pretty much perfect. It pays as well when you're measuring this to do a few measurements at a few different angles. Uh, this basically gives you an indication of whether the crank has worn out of round uh, because that can be a very big issue. But as we saw when we pulled this motor down, all of the bearings were in pretty good nick, obviously except for the thrust sides, <laughs> which is bad. But apart from that, no bearings were overly worn. I'm in fact using the same bearings. Um, so I'm not too worried about that being an issue. So I'm gonna go ahead and get a measurement of this uh, journal for all years and uh, I'll be back in a minute. Alright, so this is locked off at what that journal measured up as. Uh, obviously this micrometer is one to two inch so you basically start at one. Uh, these numbers along the bottom horizontally here are in tenths of an inch and uh, then the little lines between those numbers are in uh, twenty-five thousandths of an inch. Um, so you're looking at that, you're looking at nine plus two twenty-five thousandths is five and then plus your, these numbers here are measured in 0 0.05 thousandths or whatever they are. Um, it's hard to explain and measuring in inches is a pain in the ass. I just thought I'd know how to read it but it's hard to for me to explain. Um, but yeah, all, all of your micrometers are going to measure differently anyway but I'm just trying to give you a, a bit of an idea of how this works. So the measurement you end up with there is uh, 1.9665 thousandths of an inch. Um, what have we got? Ones, that's tens, hundreds, thousands. So yeah, that's very accurate. You go 1.967 thousandths of an inch if you wanted. Um, so basically from there, uh, as, a, as a basic, um, I suppose, rule of thumb for bearing clearances uh, on mains and rods, I go uh, two thousandths for every inch of journal. So given that that's very close to two inches, you basically want two thousandths of an inch um, difference is what you're going to want. So basically from here, um, set your dial gauge. I've set the two inch, the two inch thing in the dial gauge because obviously very close to two inches. Um, you wouldn't want it to be with that measurement if it was over two inches on the journal, uh, on, the, on the rod bore. Um, 
you're going to be in a bit of trouble. <laughs> That's not what you want. So basically zero that out at two inches. Um, obviously the good thing about taking measurements from a journal uh, is you don't have to be too worried about um, this being zeroed out directly. Uh, I actually measured this. This is actually what all this is, um, all this mumble jumble. I sort of started doing it, but it doesn't actually really matter. Is uh, this actually, this calibrated perfectly to two inches when put over the dial gauge actually reads the dial gauge down at point, uh, 0 0.009. So reality, that is the two inch dial gauge, but it's actually really 1.991. Inch. Either way, doesn't particularly matter because you have locked this off at the journal size. So basically what you're going to want to do here is get this. This has been locked off. This is the size of the journal, this micrometer. And you want to get a measurement of this on the dial gauge. Um, so again, it's hard. I'll get the tripod. Where's the tripod? So once again, dial gauges are all going to be different. They're all going to read a bit different. Um, this one's actually a bit of a pain in the ass. So you're pretty much going to want to, as I said, this is still locked off from the journal. Ah, get in there, you prick. You're going to want to get that in there. I'll try and get the dial to a point where you can see it. And basically get a nice good reading off of that. Um, so that's going at 0 0.0435. This is what I'm getting there. Just want to move that around a bit and try and get it as accurate as possible. But yeah, 0 .4, 0 0.0435 is what I keep hitting as a maximum. So basically what you're going to want to do there is because uh, this is two inches, you're going to want to take 0 0.0435 from two inches, which is going to give you what this reads on the dial gauge, which is the important thing because this doesn't really mean that much because it's only a reference point to that. So there you have, where you, when you take 0 0.0435 from 2, you end up with 1.9565. And essentially what that is, is what the dial gauge reads as the size of the journal. So as far as your bearing clearance, um, what, we, what we want is a thou for every inch. So we're going to want an extra two thou. So what we're going to be looking at, or um, what we want to see is about one... 0.95 5 or thereabouts that's around what we're looking for when we measure this uh, internal diameter of the bearings on the rod and that's about what we're looking for so essentially from here all we want to do is uh, put the bearing you wish to use which as we know from my engine I just took the bearing out of the turbo piston because I'm reusing the bearing because they're all very good I've put it in the naturally aspirated rod and I've talked it down to factory settings, uh, which is 35 foot-pounds. So it's important that this is all set up and talked down uh, accurately to give you an accurate measurement of uh, what you're going to need. Obviously, when you put it in the vise, make sure it's protected. You do not want to be damaging that rod. You don't want to do it up too tight um, in the vise. It doesn't need to be. Also, be very mindful of where the piston is while you're doing it up in the vise because you don't want to be accidentally squashing that piston because that's a very quick way to ruin your motor. So from here... Same thing, dial gauge goes in, and uh, at the moment we're looking at 0.041, and uh, you want to take a few measurements all the way around, get it nice and accurate, yep, 0.041-ish. That's only 0. Point, oh no, sorry, not 0. 0.041, that's 0. 0.0405. 0. 0.0405. I was reading the dial gauge wrong. Oh yeah, that side is going to 1, so it's a little bit off there. For some sort of reason. That's going almost up to 1. So you'd almost call it 0 0.0409 or 08. But on average, yeah, I'm getting around that. Yeah, 
I'd say on average that's around a 0 0.0407. So, you take your average of 0 0.0407 and you subtract that from 2. So you can see here, your 0 0.0407 minus from 2 is equal to 1.9593. So basically to get to your uh, clearance, you minus your 1.9565 from your 1.9593, uh, which as we can see is already a little bit over too thou. It's going to be a little bit on the loose side. Uh, I'll work that out exactly, even though it doesn't particularly matter too much. 0 0.0028. So you call that three thousandths of, a, of an inch if, of uh, bearing clearance, which is pretty much perfect for a, for a boosted motor. Um, so basically this is what you would repeat time after time to get all of your clearances right. As I stated, this is a very, very, very time consuming process. And that is just for the rod, rod journals, the rod bearings. Um, you also do the same with the, uh, the, the main, main bearings as well on the crank. Um, obviously, given that this motor was running with these bearings in it, I'm gonna go ahead and just, after doing one, I just sort of wanted to show you guys how to do it. I really wasn't too worried about these clearances. I think they're all gonna be fine. Um, but I just wanted to show you how do you do that. Um, considering I'm putting new bearings into the crank, into the mains, I'll do one of the mains as well for reference and I'll show you how it goes again. But uh, I'm pretty happy with these rods just to transfer all the bearings and put them back together and, and put them in the motor. I think they're gonna be fine. So I'll get this out of the voice and then we'll do a main journal. two mains uh, basically I'm just going to do them because they're the easiest to get at uh, and essentially as long as the first two come up fine uh, I'm gonna be happy to just slap it together again this is being that it is a standard RB30 with all standard components and a very low horsepower build uh, if, like I said if this was aftermarket or a ground crank or um, you know a big horsepower build you would definitely take the time to go through and ensure that all your bearing clearances were spot on uh, but given the mighty 30 I don't think it's gonna bother it too much <laughs> So anyway, that's just what I'm doing. So first things first, I'm gonna measure crank journal, main journal number one. 2.1642. All right, so the dial gauge actually has a 2.2, which is awesome, means it didn't have to mess around with shims. Uh, that's gonna be a good size for what we're doing. So, same as last time, we're going to get our micrometer and get the dial gauge in there Oop. and have a look at what we're getting on that. So, damn this is hard to hold, out in the open, not on a bench. So you can see there, we're getting point zero four six five. Really? Is what we're hitting? We're just hitting point zero four six five. So we'll hit that down there. So we're just hitting. 0.0465 and um, we're working off 2.2 so 2.2 minus 0 0.0465 is 2.1535 so that is what the journal is reading on the dial gauge which means uh, when it comes to what we want to see in the bore of the actual main in the bearing we want to see about a 2.173 
Um, again, being that tooth out, obviously, again, I'm not going to mind if it's a little bit bigger um, or even a little bit smaller. I really don't mind too much because it's not running heaps of boost. But um, you really don't want your bearing clamp tolerances to be way too tight. Uh, that causes that can cause some real issues. So we're getting about 0 0.45, just over, just a little bit over 0 0.45. So your 2.2 .2 minus that is going to be your uh, 2 point, um, two point one five five. So obviously then your 2.155 minus your 2.15 3.5 gives you a 0.0015 so it's a little bit on the tight side um, so that's yeah 1.5 foul clearance uh, a little bit on the tight side but not too tight um, definitely not going to be detrimental to this engine so now I'll measure journal number two so that came in at 2.1645 ish 0 0.0465 same thing, four, five. So there you have it. I'm getting exactly the same on that as I was on the front, on the number one. So I'm going to end up with the same thing at about uh, 1.5 thou of uh, clearance, which again is going to be fine. So given that those two were very consistent, I'm going to be happy enough to say that I'm just going to button this back up. Um, generally, that's not good practice. <laughs> generally, as far as engine builder goes, you would normally go through and measure every single one. So there you go guys, that's how you sort out your bearing clearances. Um, as you can see, extremely, extremely time consuming job. Um, but yeah, it's gotta be done, so. Anyway, hope I taught you something. Thanks for watching guys, as always. Smash like, hit subscribe, and uh, I will see you in the next episode while, when we start actually putting this bottom end back together. Cheers guys.